that wrap or coban. The human bandage called coban. Now, right, we can take that off there and we can see it's not a good idea to tape up the wings for any longer than necessary because in a growing bird because we get secondary changes in the joints. But um, this bird has bruised its wing tip a number of places. Flapping the bird, the bird's flapping around trying to trying to protect itself and in fact has broken one one blood quill here. Which I'll just take off like that. That's the blood quill at the tip of the, the wing that it had broken and um, an actively growing feather because it's only a juvenile. Now, I'll have a look at the other wing. If, if we decide to put this bird in a sling, um, I would want this bird to be able to flap its wings around and, and to exercise and uh, in such a way that it's not injuring itself. Alright little birdie, it won't be long. Feeling this one for any fractures or anything. Just quietly. Just quietly. This um, joint is already starting to fuse up. There's another louse running around there in my thumb going mm. towards me. Mm. All right, so we'll just give it a little spray and say thank you very much. We don't need you. All right. Let's see a few more. Right? These lice are biting lice. So, so if we get them, they bite us. They don't breed on us, they don't live on us for more than about 12 hours um, if uh, we don't kill them in the meantime. But, but who wants to be itchy unnecessarily and who wants to be bitten by a, a louse? Um, right, there are similar older bruising on this wing, so they've probably taped this wing first, that's why this wrist joint is already tightening up and doesn't want to extend more than that. So that's probably only been like that for a short time. But this bird, if we're going to persevere, again, we need to do some physiotherapy on this wing to start loosening up the joint that has been bandaged. Otherwise, the whole exercise would be futile. But anyway, that can be done. We'll have to have a discussion about what's appropriate for that one. I'm more inclined to euthanize than persevere with this particular birdie but we'll see what the priorities are a bit later. Okay so while we're making decisions I'm going to put the birdie with its legs in the normal position folded forward. I'm going to secure the bird body this way. So we're, we're taking the bird, we're, we're, we're putting the the legs forward. We don't want them left out behind it any longer than necessary. I'm taping, I'm holding the wings to the body securely and then I'm going to bring the towel securely round the body and get the body part wrapped up. Towels are great things. Great things. And then we can make a little, say, how, how do you do window here for our little friend. And for transport purposes, with this bird flapping around and with me now having taken all this bandage off his wings, uh, if we're going to be moving him around until he gets a, a hammock or a bag modified so that he can be basically suspended uh, from, the, from the middle like that, so he's going to have to, he would have to live like that for a little while, probably for two to three weeks. Suspended like that, with a bit more room for his head to come out, I'm just giving you the idea that you need to make a bag with a couple of holes in it for his legs to come out, um, a couple of holes for his wings to come out, a hole for his, for his uh, head, and obviously a hole for his um, woofle valve. Oh yeah, most uh, important. <laughs> the woofle valve on the underside of his body is uh, most important to keep free so that he can, his poops will fall away and not get stuck to his head. That's right. Alright, so we need a few, a bag 
bag or a hammock um, with some padding <coughs> made like that. You know, I'm going to put okay. it in the box like that for the moment and we'll move on to the next little friend that you brought me. Okay.